common difference identities for sine and cosine. These formulas are the scariest looking formulas on your formula sheets because they are the longest, okay? But they are actually fairly easy to use once you know how they work. First of all, they're scary because I don't know if you've ever used the Greek letter theta before in your life or alpha. Normally for angles, we use theta. But in the sum and difference identities, there's two angles. So because there's two angles, they decide to use the Greek letters alpha and beta. And we are not going to prove where these come from. We're just going to say thank you to the math gods for giving us these formulas. They're on our formula sheet. And we can just use them in questions. That being said, I do want to point out a very typical mistake that students sometimes do with these formulas. And it's a very understandable mistake to do. I'll write it in red here. Never do the following. Maybe you want to write it down. This is not equal to what the students want to do is distribute, which makes total sense because you're used to distributing. When you have something outside of brackets, you distribute. That makes sense. However, that only makes sense if the something that is outside is a number or a variable that represents a number. Sign is not a variable. It is not a number. It is a function you are not allowed to distribute functions. Sometimes on old computers, before you could type things nicely, the only way that you could write the square root of two things added is the square root symbol would look like this. Sometimes it would have a little tiny edge to it on old computers. Then you would write brackets, and you'd have something like this. Now, mathematically, I hope you can see that 9 plus 16, you can do that, right? 25. This would be the square root of 25. This should equal 5. But we had the same problem in old things like this. Sometimes students would go, oh, can I distribute this? No. It is not the same as the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16. We know this is the square root of 25, which is 5. This would be 3 plus 4. That would be 7. It's not the same. You can't distribute a function. So if you have sine or cos of two angles added or subtracted, the only thing you'll be able to do is use these formulas. And what we want to get good at is recognizing when we have these formulas, either the right side or the left side. If we have the right side, you can switch it to the left side. If you have the left side, you can switch it to the right side. But these are the only things you can switch it to. You can never distribute a function. So with that in mind, we'll go to example. We're going to start with example two, actually. Oh, before we get to example two, right above example two is also the formulas for 10 on page 638. We have a formula for 10 alpha plus beta adding two angles. And we have a formula for 10 alpha minus theta. And you will need to have these formulas mostly memorized. Okay? And by mostly memorized, this is what I mean. For the sine and the cosine ones, or here, we'll do the tan ones first because it's on here. For the tan formulas, this is how I want you to have it memorized. If you have a fraction, with a whole bunch of tans in it. You should say, I should look at my formula sheet. That's as much memory. Like, I don't care. See these fractions with a whole bunch of tans? If you have that, check on your formula sheet if it matches up. For sine and cos, if you have sine, cos, cosine, like a whole bunch of sines and cos is added or subtracted together, you don't have to have it memorized that, oh, this one matches up with this one. But you do have to have it memorized that, oh, I have a whole bunch of sine and cosines added and subtracted together. 
I should check my formula sheet to see if it matches up. And what we're going to do, so for example, in example number two, this question says, write each expression in simplest form, then evaluate where possible. So the first thing you would do is you'd say, hey, I have a whole bunch of sines and cosines subtracted here. Is there a formula that matches? So this is my alpha and this is my beta. This would be alpha and this would be beta. Is there a formula that has sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta on my formula sheet? So I go, I look on my formula sheet, and sure enough, it says this is equal to sine alpha minus beta. So because of that, this one is going to equal sine, my alpha is 8x, my beta is 3x, so I can write it as 8x minus 3x, those are like terms. So this one would simplify to sine of 5x. The second one, I'd see a whole bunch of tans in a fraction. So I want to check if there is a formula that matches this perfectly. And it has to match perfectly. It can't be like, oh, it's close. Right? Zero is close to one, but if I have a question out of one mark and I give you a zero out of one, you will not be happy with that. I'd be like, oh, but it's close. I'd be like, no, it's zero. So zero is close to one. So it has to match up perfectly. So we look at our formula. Is there a tan alpha plus tan beta over one minus tan alpha tan beta? Yes. It is equal to the tan alpha plus beta formula. So for part B, I could say it's equal to 10. Alpha was pi over 6, and beta was pi over 1. Now if I wanted to simplify these, I'd have to have a common denominator for my fraction. So I'll multiply this by 2 and 2. Give me 10 of 3 pi over 12, which reduces to 10 of pi over 4. Oh, you remember that from your pi plate? Pi over 4 family for 10 is equal to 1. So this one we could evaluate. I like the circle. Questions four and five from your home.